And welcome back to The Breakfast. Uh, good morning once again for those who are still just joining us. Uh, as always, we love to kick off the uh, program. We're talking major stories, making headlines across the country. And this morning is not going to be different. We would like to say good morning to our guest, uh, Mr. Chris Wandu, the publisher CKN News. Thank you very much for your time and uh, thanks for joining us. Good morning, gentlemen of the press. Good morning, sir. <laughs> thanks for joining us. So right. um okay uh, let's uh, let's begin with uh, the let's begin with the nation newspaper uh, this story here says low 20% of covid-19 tests returns positive says the ptf they're basically saying one in every 5 cases one in every 5 tests return positive uh, this one says who is who on nigeria's ambassador list MNK makes history. Uh, the details of that is found on page two of the Nation newspaper. This one says, anxiety lingers in Kwara APC after meetings and Niger governor to mediate. Also, Alicia Inka, the Nobel laureate, has weighed in on the Kuka saga. He says, Kuka position on state of nation in order and Okada riders spying for bandits, kidnappers in Oyo state. Stock exchange to list shares for trading. Also, Ondo orders herders to quit forest. AFCC arraigns Mama Boko Haram on another 41.7 million naira fraud. Police, Amotekun, raises a search party to rescue kidnapped travelers in Oshun State. Also, this one here says low turnout in public and private school, you know, as they resumed yesterday, Monday, uh, January 18th, 2021. Uh, good morning again, Mr. Nwandu. Uh, let's, uh, let's dive right into the papers this morning. Which of them would you like to analyze with us? Uh, of course, the major headline, which is the rising cases of um, uh, coronavirus um, across the country. Um, the news coming from uh, PTF yesterday is worrisome. Uh, it goes to show that uh, one out of every five um, testing cases um, so far uh, came out positive. That to me is a very, 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 very serious one. And uh, that's what we've been saying that uh, if you take that uh, on the face value and uh, as a benchmark, then what's in essence is that. We're probably uh, we're having the, within the reach of about 20% of Nigerians uh, being uh, uh, COVID 19 positive, but that is uh, the rush to. Um, but that is based on those that we are tested, and uh, which is why some of us are very, very scared uh, with the reopening of school and the way we have been going about um, our lives as if nothing then seems to be happening. And uh, most Nigerians still don't take it seriously, just look at it as some are saying that. Uh, it's a big man disease and the rest of them. But that is very worrisome. And uh, uh, what that has come to show is that uh, everybody has to take personal responsibility for his or her life now. The government is trying to do their best. Uh, whether their best is good or not is a you know, discussion for another day. But for now, the cases seem to be rising and that is very worrisome. Hmm. How about the slow turnout in public and private schools? Did you did you uh, expect this? You know, seeing that parents are still worried, you know, about the safety of their children. COVID nineteen is still very much out there. Cases rising every given day, and uh, there's a low turnout in public and private universities. Did this come as a surprise to you? Well, funny enough, I'm I'm uh, I'm in the midst of this. I'm a student, I'm, a, I'm a, an undergraduate in one of the universities, yeah, the private university in Cambridge. Currently, I'm in the Baton as we are speaking. So I'm in school. Um, yes, the turnout in school has, has not been that encouraging. Um, when I was in class yesterday, most close to about 40% of my mates were not in class. So um, but we are believing that some of them will still join us. Um, my worry is the um, is the various protocols being put in place by the by the government, which some of the schools don't seem to be adhering to, and um, that to me is a challenge. Uh, because when you talk of social dancing, the classrooms are not spaced enough for such. Most of the schools, they, I'm talking about this now. And um, also, funny enough, um, 
I also took my son to one of the private universities on Sunday, where he resumed. But there was a bit much better uh, because um, um, they had they conducted a COVID nineteen test for them, but they were allowed to come in, and the result came out to be now now also, and uh, some of them are also doing very well. So, uh, but my problem is not just the private schools. I'm sure the private schools can handle. Public schools is where it's going to be. Yeah. Um, I don't know the level of I think, uh, uh, what kind of assistance the, the government is giving the public schools. Uh, the private schools are taking care of themselves. The public schools is where the problem is going to be. Hmm. All right. Um, you know, also quickly share with us um, from a conversation we had yesterday. Uh, the person, uh, school proprietor that we had spoken with, um, said the compliance to COVID-19 protocols, the if, you know, wearing of a mask, having hand washing um, equipment, you know, around schools, and of course, um, hand sanitizers, is only protocol that lasts maybe a week. You know, if, you know, if we're if we're lucky, most of these schools after a week stop being able to afford these things. Um, how do you you know how do you expect that they would be able to continue with the same protocol for months if we are still dealing with this. Yes, yeah, still talking about the school. My my personal opinion is that uh, we should have a bridge of both technology and um, physical in, in learning these days. The the uh, the narrative has changed, whether we like it or not, across the globe. Uh, what I should think is that um, most institutions, especially the higher institutions, should start embracing technology. Where we can have, um, students can be allowed to also have online um, lectures, um, probably bring down the physical presence in schools about fifty percent. Um, so prior to the open opening, in my own university, we'll be having um, online lectures uh, before the reopening. So that in has helped. But how many public uh, um, um, universities or higher institutions can be able to afford that? Same thing with. Um, the private schools, the private schools also, in secondary schools have been having uh, online learning. Uh, but the public school is where they go. I, I don't know how they're going to contain the social distance in my village in Omongo, Omongo State, um, where uh, this is that possible. And the problem is that when you're talking about social distance, is that we expanded the infrastructure in the schools because that is an issue. If you are talking that uh, we should have some level of social distance, that means an average of about fifty percent uh, um, students should be in classes. In the classes they are present, have we expanded? Those? None of that, that has been done. So I think what we need to government should do. I saw the um, Commission of Education Lagos State moving around yesterday around the schools to make sure that uh, some of the schools are, are applying the, the protocols. But how many have would they have been able to visit? So, um, which, comes, which is why most of the parents are also very scared in raising their children to go to back school. I don't see any reason why the seven governors should agree the government to quickly open schools when they have not put the, all the necessary infrastructure in place to make sure, to make sure uh, that students coming back to school are safe. Um, right. But let's see how it goes. Okay. Um, um, then let uh, everybody take personal, um, uh, personal take off um, their uh, IG as it were. Okay, all right. Let, let's move to the Nigerian Tribune now, where there's a story I can already see there that uh, refers to some of the statements that you've made. Uh, you stated that uh, COVID-19 tests were done or were carried out, you know, when uh, in some of the places that you visited. Um, but it says here, COVID-19 tests not required for student resumption. And that's from the federal government. It's at the bottom of the page on the Nigerian Tribune. Uh, we also have IYC obeys Clark, a uh, boy loaf, suspend planned protest. Um, 15 million Nigerians on drugs. That is from Buba Marwa, the, um, of course, the person now in charge of the NDLEA, former military administrator of Lagos State. PDP Acts Court to declare Dogara seat vacant. Also on the Nigerian Tribune, food inflation. 300,000 metric tons of maize to be released in February. Um, and then the big one you can find on the um, Nigerian Tribune, Akiri Dolu, the Ondo State Governor, gives headsmen seven days to vacate forest reserves. Uh, bans night gra grazing, outlaws movement of cattle within cities and highways. Also, Amotekun OPC deploy men into forest as headsmen kidnap travelers in Oshun. 
most Okada riders in Oyo spying for bandits and foreign kidnappers, Amotekun boss says. And um, also, top of the paper there, you can see Wale Shoinka backs Kuka, condemns double standard, and uh, slams pastors supporting Trump. I'm not sure why that is. 22 Quara legislators, seven federal lawmakers support APC chairman's removal. Lai Mohammed faction adamant on his removal. All right, um, Mr. Wandu, let's first of all start with what's going on in Ondo State. Uh, the governor, of course, um, put out a notice yesterday after security meetings and discussions and decided that headsmen were no longer welcome um, in the forest in uh, Ondo State. Apparently, there seems to be a security challenge that they are struggling to deal with with the headsmen. So let's start with your reactions to that. Um, it becoming worrisome for me um, uh, that the headsmen uh, are now being tried as uh, uh, kidnappers. And that, to me, is a very worrisome one. Um, the headsmen we used to know who we are. We are very loving, caring, jovial. And uh, if you remember, we are growing up. When you see people like me, headsmen, when we are kids, with their cows and dress, they will let them at the back and clapping and jumping and uh, you know, uh, play with them. That's not what we are seeing now. From most of the mention uh, we have seen, uh, when most of these people are there, uh, you come to see that uh, most of them go under this guy's of being heads and, and um, to perpetrate him. And so, I'm not surprised that the governor of the state came out of policy um, yesterday. Uh, that they should leave this. But the problem for me, if they leave the rest, where are they going to keep their cows? And that means that they have to come back um, to where we were before. They have, the cows have to start moving from one end to the other, destroying cash crops and um, crops of uh, farmers. Um, I don't know why we have not been able to implement the issue of the ranching, which was agreed three months and years ago. And uh, the government and with that policy that are going to be ranching. Um, and that is, I thought, was the way to go. But uh, now, nothing seems to be done about that. So I think we go back to what we do, so that any other person in the forest uh, will be termed as a terrorist or a Napa. Uh, uh, less branches. I'm not, a, I'm not of the opinion that government should build branches for anybody, because that is my business. Building branches also means uh, uh, the person that is in charge, uh, that is involved in poultry, or uh, pigry and rest of them also need that kind of assistance. It's very business which uh, the uh, headsmen or whoever has the cows should be able to participate. And funny enough, um, let me also tell you that most of those cows you see with um, the headsmen are not owned by them. Hmm. They are just helping to move those cows, feed them. The owners of those cows are multi millionaires that stay in their are just right now. So hmm. I think the way forward us is to go back and look at the issue of ranching as a green and they make that possible. Uh, but um, seven days, let's have answer. But it's becoming worse. The issue of headsmen kidnapping. Yes, Mr. Wanda. Across, like, not just in the state, across. Uh, and that is becoming very, very worse. Okay, Mr. Awanjo, we, we have less than five minutes on this segment, so I wanted us to quickly turn to the Daily Independent newspaper very briefly. The big story here says FG releases 10 billion naira for domestic vaccine production, and it says they're assuring Nigerians of safe, effective vaccine distribution, and they're to sanction another 100 defaulters of safety protocols. Also, the FG is asking NCDC to conduct 450 tests per local government area. And uh, we paid 900 million naira as ransom because of kidnappers in 2020, as well as this one saying worsening, just here below on the Daily Independent, worsening uh, conflicts, interests, corruption, worsening apapa pots and gridlock. The rest of the stories here uh, we've taken on, uh, on the other papers. So would you like to talk about the vaccine that Nigeria is about to, the federal government is about to pump into now? They're saying they're going to focus on local vaccine production or the one about insecurity you know saying they paid over 900 million naira as ransom to kidnappers in 2020 or the one with uh, the apapa ports and uh, a gridlock it's no wonder yeah good one uh, the, uh, 
Passé, 10 million naira passé production. Uh, have we been able to uh, get the vaccine? Has it been approved? Uh, because before you start losing, it has to be approved. So, have we gotten the vaccine? Have we made a, a breakthrough like other countries? And not just um, have been, yes, I'm for local production of vaccine if we can. But that also have, don't also forget that there's an international um, angle to it. You don't just produce vaccines, so you are just keeping people. Um, it has to be uh, test, tested and also approved by world bodies. And so that is very, very key. Um, so if we are going to go in production of vaccine, which is good for us, which is good, yeah, we we'll also have to make sure that these vaccines are very, very uh, for, uh, for us. Then the issue of 9 million um, to, uh, to keep us, that to me is just put in mind. It can't be my 100 million, it's more than that. Because if you see what, for an average of uh, most people get that, some uh, pay five million, some pay two million, so I assume that that is not the norm. What are the ones that you are not aware of? Um, the issue of this is becoming a big challenge for us. I think the federal government should do something, which is why we are calling on the hmm. president, whose uh, bulk stops on the table to, to help Nigeria. Nigerians are not secure. Uh, a few days ago, he said Nigeria is better than 2020. And that is a total lie for me. Uh, we are worst off, and it should, it, it, we should be able to something about that. Um, in, about in, in 30 that seconds. Not Mr. Wandu, in 30 seconds, yeah, we're out of time, but in 30 seconds, please, do you think Nigerians will trust a locally made vaccine? That is the problem with us. Uh, we like everything. Um, so most of that. But we should be able to trust it. Uh, maybe some of the people who uh, over the years and it's working for us. We have local, we, we have got production of drugs that we can help. I for what I do that local drug, and I trust that. So if it's approved, which is why I said if approved and it's tested, then why not? Nigeria, some people should be able to take and uh, bet. Uh, what I think is that we, we need uh, as many as we can as as much as possible. Other countries are getting their people vaccinated. We don't seem to be anything that we don't possibly have to do. And that right. is not good enough for us. All right. Thank you so much uh, for your time and for sharing your thoughts with us on uh, of the you. Press this morning, uh, Mr. Chris Wandu. Thank you very much for having me. You have a nice day. You too, sir. All right. That's all we have. Uh, unfortunately, we couldn't take, um, you know, all the papers, The Punch and The Guardian, but uh, very likely tomorrow morning we'll bring those papers uh, to you. Yes. Uh, for now, we're taking a short break. When we come back, we'll tell you what happened today in history on the 19th of January, many, many years ago, maybe not even so far off uh, ago. And remember also to uh, do what you can so you can make history. So sometime in the future, we might tell your story uh, on The Breakfast. Stick around.